Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, welcome back to the NPTEL MOOC course on developing soft skills and personality. This is week 6, module number 2 and lecture number 32. This week I have been focusing on communication skills and in this module in particular, I am going to focus on barriers to communication and in specific, I am just going to focus on the barriers which arise because of sender or receiver's personality. Before I start, as usual, I would like to get back to the last lecture. In the last lecture, we uh, focused on effective communication and while talking about effective communication, I highlighted the point that an effective communicator is somebody who will always lead and then uh, people will be happy to follow this effective communicator. People will also be happy if they are able to communicate effectively. All unhappiness we found out that is coming because a person is not able to communicate effectively. Communicate whatever is felt in the heart is not being expressed. Communication however is a very complex interactive process and we found that it involves shared assumptions and unspoken agreement. So, if these assumptions and agreements are not very clear, then there will be misinterpretations, misunderstandings and frequent miscommunications are possible. Effective communication overall is your ability to cause the intended and desired response. And then I discussed with you about the basic communication process which you can easily remember if you ask 5 WH questions which involves who sends, what to, whom, through which channel, with what effect. And towards the end I discussed specifically on the various components which will contribute to effective communication. I focused on 5 aspects starting with conciseness and clarity, then conviction and confidence, genuineness and interest, empathy and timing sense, brevity and effectiveness. So, these are uh, aspects if you try to implement in your day to day life, which will take you to becoming an effective communicator. Now, in this one, despite your best efforts to become an effective communicator, that could be some barriers, something that actually prevents you to communicate effectively. Sometimes it is in you, your personality, sometimes it is coming out of you, not your personality, but it is because of the receiver. Remember this communication process expanded model, which I uh, discussed in the previous one. So, even when you are trying to involve yourself in the process of encoding decoding and understanding the message that you are sending, the other person is trying to decode, encode and understand. There is something in between which is acting as kind of obstacles and those are what I call as barriers. Now, in this lecture, we will try to identify what are barriers and then how they affect communication and how we can overcome some of these barriers. Barriers are things which are obstacles to effective communication. Barriers are anything that impedes free flow of ideas. Barriers are something that would prevent active listening and careful response. And these barriers act as physical, mental, emotional, psychological blocks and result in failure of communication and or miscommunication. In this lecture, particularly we will focus on one of the two basic barriers, the first one arising from sender or receiver's personality. In the next lecture, we will focus on interpersonal transactions. Now, look at how the barrier can arise even at the encoding decoding level, an idea that gets encoded and then decoded by sender and receiver. 
if they do not share a common code, if they do not share a common language, if they do not have a common frame of reference, so then the meaning will not be understood, it will not be interpreted correctly. Take this example, a sentence like this, short circuit at office, please send an electrician. So, this comes as an SMS and then the other person receives it. Now, what does it mean? So, for the normal man, if I ask you, how would you interpret this? So, you would say that, okay, some kind of uh, electricity failure in your office, so you want an electrician's help. Okay. So, this is one common frame of reference, but the common frame of reference could change depending on the persons who are using it, depending on their professions. For example, if this has to happen in a spy story, imagine this is something that James Bond is sending to M, his boss. Now, what could be the interpretation? He is not obviously asking for an electrician, could it be something more than this? It could mean short circuit at office could mean my partner is kidnapped or in some different context, it could also mean my partner is killed. Please send an electrician can mean please send someone for my help, not actually an electrician, but actually it is somebody who can assist him. So, the message is encoded, decoded and put in a common frame of reference, only the concerned uh, persons can easily understand. If you do not understand this common frame of reference, then there will be problem. Look at another example that happens between sender and receiver. In this case, the sender who sends the message, one lady is not clear about her objective or uses an inappropriate use of language, which is actually uh, causing this miscommunication. This is the story of a real incident of an American tourist who had travelled to so many places and then returned and she is about to take a connective flight to another uh, place. Now, at the airport, the officer who is checking everybody, he just asked her, what is their occupation? Now, instead of uh, saying that uh, she is just uh, house manager, she is at house, so she uh, just said that none. So, the officer looked at the items that she has been carrying. So, there were so many baggage, there were lot of things in her handbag, very costly jewelry some diamond studded hair clip. So, very expensive items purchased throughout the places that she has been travelling. And then we are not sure what occurred in the mind of the officer. So, he went ahead and then he started checking. So, he checked all her baggage, he checked her handbag, he they even took her to a uh, private place and then they frisked her they took her shoes, they cut and then they checked something. And then after about two hours, they said, fine ma'am, you can go. Then the lady became furious. She said, is it like you just stop people at random and then you just check them just for your fun and now I have missed my connecting flight. And then you do all these things and then you say that uh, everything is fine and then we should go just like that. So, the officer was puzzled and then he said, ma'am, when I asked for your occupation, you said none. So, we were quite surprised. So, she actually did not get the point, but when the officer heard this as none, he thought of N-U-N, normally we call a sister. Okay. So, he thought that if she is a sister, if she is a nun, 
why is she carrying so many costly items and then why is she not looking simple? Is she trying to cheat me? Okay. The sound is the same, none, none, but the meaning and the letters are different. So, although the people who were speaking English were involved in this, so they were not able to clearly get what one person is sending and what the other person has received. So, when they are not clear in their objective and they do not use the inappropriate uh, or appropriate language, so then it becomes a problem. Obviously, you know it could be overcome if they sought clarification, if he really asked her ma'am are you uh, really a nun, then if she asked what do you mean by that and then if he explained are you uh, associated with some church and then you are doing some service to church, it could have become very clear. But somehow as I said language is real fun, we play games and then we have our own assumptions and we assume that people try to understand that. Look at another interesting example between sender and receiver, this time the receiver is unable to understand and interpret the message properly. The example is of a teacher who wanted to demonstrate the evils of drinking liquor to his students. The teacher went to the class and then he had one litre bottle and then in the bottle he had arak liquor, so that smells very bad. So, he wanted to show them it is very bad to drink this, but he wanted to give them a demonstration. And then on the other hand, one small uh, transparent bottle, he had fresh earthworms picked from the garden and then they were just wriggling. So, he asked the students, can you see this? They said, yes sir, what is it? They said that, sir it is arak, so it is liquor, how do you know that? Sir, you have also pasted it there and then it is also smelling so bad, so we can understand that it is a rack. Then he asked them, what about this one? Sir, they are earthworms, are they alive? They said, yes sir, they are alive. So, we could see them moving, they are moving here and there. So, then he said, now you see what happens. So, he took an earthworm and then dropped inside the arak bottle. So, the earthworm started wriggling very fast, moving here and there, it tried to surface out, but it went, it fell flat and then it died. Then everybody were very curiously looking at it and then they showed their sympathy, they said what is happening and then they were very eagerly looking at it. Then again he took another earthworm, he put it, then they said, oh what is happening, oh alas, oh it is dying. So, he put one by one all the worms and all the worms died finally. Now, he showed them the bottle again and then he asked them, have you got the message clearly? Then a guy from the last one, he just raised hand and said, yes sir, yes sir, I got the message clearly. I have understood it very clearly, said okay, please get up and then explain it to the other students. The smart student who raised hand, so he got up and then with lot of enthusiasm he said, sir, if we take liquor, it will kill all the worms in our stomach. Okay. So, sir, I think we should take liquor as much as possible so that our stomach keeps purified, especially at least after each meal, it will kill all impurities and keep our system clean. Now, you can understand the sender, the teacher actually wanted the receiver, the students to understand that drinking liquor is very bad, it will actually kill the person eventually, it will first start with killing the stomach and then slowly it will kill all organs which are like earthworms and they will be killed so quickly. Now, the student got a different message, he thought that it will kill only the worms in the stomach 
and completely he got the negative meaning. So, this happens when the receiver is unable to understand and interpret the message properly. Teachers say something, the receiver received it in a different manner and gave a different interpretation. So, you have to be very careful when this kind of messages are being passed. Let us look more on personality barriers. The personality barriers are mostly psychological in nature. It happens in the mind, it is to do with the mindset and then people tend to take for granted the commonality in communication. For instance, they overlook the differences in backgrounds. Difference in perception is also ignored. Remember, we spent one uh, complete lecture on perception. Look at another example here, where the way people perceive things are completely different. This is a famous example of the experience an anthropologist had during his encounter with an old cannibal and this anthropologist is Branislaw Malinowski and during the second world war, he went and then interviewed lot of cannibals and then he wanted to know about their lifestyle and he wanted that to be publicized to the uh, civilized people. At the end of the interview and then when he was about to leave, the leader of the cannibal, so cannibal I hope you know or man eaters, okay. they can eat human beings. The leader, although Malinowski is there, so he can recognize he is a friend, so they have not done any harm. And then the leader asked him about the world war, he had a question. He asked him how the Europeans managed to eat the quantities of human flesh produced by massive killings. So, during the second war, they killed so many people and then the bodies were lying. He asked, how did they uh, manage to eat all of them? Then Malinowski told him, Europeans never ate the flesh of the enemy they killed. So, this was very surprising to the cannibal and then he was rather shocked and then he just in his shock and surprise asked him, what kind of barbarians are you? He asked in horror to kill people without any real object. So, the perspective of Malinowski is that the Europeans are civilized and then the cannibals are uncivilized. The perception of the cannibal is that if you kill human beings for nothing and then if you are not going to eat them, so then you are really barbarians, you are the ones who are uncivilized. So, this is like the way you look at the cup whether you look at it and say it is off empty or it is off full. You can completely take two different perceptions. Look at other aspects, factors which contribute to one's perspective. Often the socio-cultural milieu that is the environment, the socio-cultural environment, the background one has grown up in. So, that gives a perspective one's interpersonal experiences, almost all of us have our own unique experiences and then one's temperament, okay, the way the person is developing one's mood. The personality as such, ideas and values, position in life, religious and political beliefs etcetera actually gives a person the personality, a kind of perspective which may concur with other perspectives or it may also contradict. It is interesting to note that even the position we hold gives us a certain perspective and it makes it very difficult to understand others with different outlook. Take for example, father, son, the different positions they have. The son while growing up gets a feeling that father never understands and father always says it is like his generation was always better. But when the son grows up, he says the same complaint that his father was telling about his son. Teacher, student, the student has a different kind of perspective 
as a student, but when he grows as a teacher, so then the perspective is reversed. Similarly, senior and junior for example, seniors, the second year students, third year students, even the final year students, when the new students, juniors join, they say for example, ragging, they will say is a necessary evil, you have to rag them, so that they will come out of uh, their shell, so they will be uh, very expressive and open, so they have to rag them. When you ask the junior and their parents, they will say that no, 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 ragging is bad, it is a evil and it has to be contained and it has to be reported, if anybody does, it, he or she should be severely punished. Now, the same parents, when the students become senior, so they will say that no, it is ok, now they are matured children, so if they are ragging somebody, it is fine. Now, the same parents who wanted them to be protected in first year, they say that it is ok when they reach second year. So, the position one takes. The other interesting thing on which so many serials have been made is the positions which mother-in-law and daughter-in-law they would take in the serials. Daughter-in-law always complains about the mother-in-law and always feels that the mother-in-law is uh, not understanding, the mother-in-law is uh, very uh, insensitive, the mother-in-law is cruel and all that. So, mother-in-law always says that the daughter-in-law is not up to her expectations, so she should improve, so uh, she is not working enough, she is lazy and all that. Now, when the same daughter-in-law grows, evolves as mother-in-law, then the position changes and when she gets another daughter-in-law, except rare cases, many of them again give the same kind of complaints which they received when they were daughter-in-laws. Okay. Now, same thing happens between manager and worker, husband and wife. Let me uh, give you one interesting anecdote about uh, a husband and a wife. One very loving and caring husband went to the doctor and then uh, he told the doctor that, uh, doctor I think my wife is suffering from some hearing deficiency and then uh, I want her to be cured. I love her so much, I do not want her to even know that I am aware of it, it might hurt her. Okay. But you help me to get her cured of this hearing deficiency and uh, by which our communication will improve. So, the doctor said, okay, fine, but let me uh, understand how uh, difficult is the level of her hearing deficiency. So, he said, you do one experiment, when you go home, how is your home? He said, my home uh, is like uh, uh, there are uh, four doors and then it is in a kind of uh, compartment, one room after another one. So, he said, fine. So, when you go to the first room, you ask her something and then when you go to the second room, you ask third room you continue, fourth room you continue and then the place where she is able to respond and the rough distance that you have, just come and report to me, I will be able to identify where she is exactly uh, not able to hear you, what is her level and I can treat her accordingly. So, he went and then he stood on the front door and then uh, he could see on the fourth room that is kitchen. So, you can see her back and then she was cooking something. So, he shouted and then called her, honey, my dear, what are you cooking for today? So, no response, then he just moved to the next room, then again he shouted, he asked, honey, what are you cooking for today? no response. Again, he went to the third one. Honey, what are you cooking for today? No response. So, he went close, the fourth room is the kitchen. So, just he stood next to her and then he asked, Honey, what are you cooking for today? She said, chicken 
and I am shouting this for the fourth time. Chicken and I am shouting this for the fourth time, meaning you might have understood now the hearing deficiency is not with the wife, okay. it is with the husband. So, whenever he shouted, she had been responding, but he was not able to hear her. But because of the position that he is husband and he is flawless, he cannot make any mistake and it is a wife who will always make the mistake, he is not able to see through his own uh, limitations. So, that was an eye opener for the husband and he realized that it is his personality, his position that is giving him the problem, not his wife. So, put yourself always in the other person's side and then you try to understand whether there is problem with you before you try to identify what is with the other person. There are other reasons like the tendency to stereotype and jump to conclusions. Uh, stereotypes or the kind of uh, conclusions we make, the images that we make, just because somebody at some point did something wrong, we will always think that that kind of person will always do the same thing. So, one servant stole money, you caught him and you will think that all servants are like this, they will always steal money. So, there may be 10 other honest and sincere people, but you form a stereotype and then you jump to conclusions. It happens under various categories, nationality, so Indians, Pakistani, Chinese, American. So, different uh, people think that uh, they are uh, behaving differently, religion wise, Jew, Parsi, Hindu, Muslim, Christian race, color, black or uh, negro, white, European and then we have brown which are uh, Indians and then yellow, the South Asians. In terms of work, again we have stereotypes, professor, businessman, smuggler, rickshaw puller, sweeper, beggar. In terms of food, again we have stereotypes, vegetarian people are like this, we have some qualities, non-vegetarians are like this. In terms of education, so if you are from IIT, so, we associate some kind of brand, elitism, quality. If you are a government college student, then we think that you have never attended classes, you are always a lazy, insincere student and so on. Within IIT, if you are a 10 pointer, so you say that, oh, you must be really working hard, you are really brilliant, you are a genius. If you are a 5 pointer, so then you say that you are an average guy, useless fellow and so on. Now, by doing this uh, stereotypical way of looking at people, we deny them individuality, we do not see them as different people, we do not give them uniqueness. We interpret within the framework of a stereotype the symbols these individuals display which is actually incorrect. Apart from these two other things which are associated with personality, one is this rigidity of thought that blurs the power of discrimination. So, there are people you might have come across them. They neither learn from new information nor accept any contradictory view. They are very rigid in their thinking. Also, we can term some people as the know-it-alls. You go and tell them that, oh, this is a new article that I read, they will say, I know, I know, I have read this. Hey, this is just published today, yeah, but I know, I have heard of it, I have read somewhere. They will never make you believe that they did not know anything any new thing, anything that you share, they will say, I know it, I know it. Okay. And these people can be easily identified when they use words like all, always, everybody, none, never, nobody. When you use these terms, actually they are acting as barriers to your own personality in communication. Let us look at some quick strategies for overcoming these barriers. The most important thing is to develop empathy, that is you have to put yourselves into the shoes of the others. Willingness to recognize someone's situation. Now, husband is supposed to take the wife for a movie or a party that evening and the wife is dressed and ready, she is very eager and she has been preparing herself for the past three hours. Husband comes so late. And then the moment 
he opens the door, she just shouts at him, throws things on him, she expresses her anger like anything, without knowing the fact that the husband met with an accident and then fortunately he was saved, he was given some first aid and then it was a miracle that he reached even home because on some fluke he escaped. Now, she did not even see some first aid that was given to him, anger actually uh, completely closed her eyes. Now, that is the willingness to recognize someone's situation. So, before uh, getting angry at someone, important to realize that why that person might have actually come late, despite the fact that the person knows very well that uh, it is important for him or her to take me out. So, accept his or her point of view without prejudice, be non-judgmental and one should be open to receive contrary thoughts and ideas. One should not have the rigidity of thinking of if one has, one should try to change it consciously. An understanding of the psychology of man, how human beings function that also helps and an awareness of the differences in background, perception, point of view, each point of view is to be respected, although it can vary from our own points of views. Analysis of one's verbal and non-verbal behavior. So, uh, when we go to non-verbal behavior, I will talk more about that, but you should be able to even look at the non-verbal clues given by the other person and then develop relevant personality traits. Okay, if somebody is angry, as I have said before, you should not become aggressive. So, appropriate personality trait, not allowing stereotypes to cloud judgment and then looking at the things from others perspective. Remember the story I told you from Stephen Covey about the paradigm shift that happened in his mind in the new way subway car. So, remember this first week uh, module 3 lecture 3 on human perceptions, where he says that you should try to understand others first before you want them, want you to be understood. Okay. Seek to understand before you uh, want yourself to be understood. Now, at the concluding point, I want you to understand that empathy after all is the most important one. If you are able to empathize, you will be able to resolve lots of issues in communication and a very famous quote from Khalil Gibran, he says that, keep me away from the wisdom which does not cry, which means you may say that you are a very wise and intelligent person, but if you cannot be moved to tears, he says that I do not want that kind of uh, knowledge or wisdom. The philosophy which does not laugh, so you are a philosopher, but you keep the face all the time serious. So, he says if you are not able to laugh and the greatness which does not bow before children. So, you may be a very great person, but if you cannot recognize the innocence of children and then if you cannot respect that, he says that I do not consider that as a greatness. This means like you need to have empathy at all points of your uh, life and that will help you to develop you as an effective communicator. So, I conclude with this thought, I will get back to you with more barriers to communication and how we can overcome in the next lecture. Thank you for watching this video and have a nice day.